G'day, I just wanted to run through a process that you can use to get a DJI Phantom 3 uh, battery out of hibernation. Uh, this information is for educational purposes only. If you choose to follow any of this, you do it at your own risk. I take no responsibility for it. Uh, batteries can be extremely dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. And if you do things like short a pack out, you know, you can start uh, a very serious fire which you can't just put out. Anyway, let's get on with it. Okay, so I've got a DJI Phantom 3 battery here. Uh, I don't know what revision it is, but it's kind of irrelevant at this point. Uh, when I measure it, I get around about, uh, let's have a look, it's around about 15 something volts. Yeah, just put them in the right way to get the right polarity. So it's uh, about 15 volts in this one, um, which should be fine to power up. Um, it was originally uh, a lot lower and what I did was I just brought the cell voltages up one at a time uh, until it was within a range that I would be able to um, to use basically. So the first thing I need to do is I need to solder on uh, a couple of wires uh, and these need to go on to uh, one of them goes onto the ground one of them is going to go on clock and the other is going to go on data but unlike uh, what a lot of other people are doing in relation to where you connect it uh, I'll be connecting to the SMB so most people will be hooking up to the SCL and the SDA pins um, and those two pins uh, on the top here up near the connector uh, and uh, what you find is that if you try and use those pins for this process that it won't work the other location I'm going to hook up to is ground, so I'm just going to tag onto this big ground pad here um, and uh, should be right to go. So I'm just going to tin up a couple of wires. Okay, get that out of the way. Just want to sh shorten those a little. They're still a bit hot. I'm not going to shorten the ground because I want to get a fairly big tag on that one. Right, let's get this ground on. Ground is on. So we have the clock pin, it's the SMBC here, and this is the data pin up here. Um, some of the boards are slightly different, um, but generally those pins will all exist. So I'm going to go with blue for clock. Should really drop a little bit of flux in there just to make the job easier. Sometimes you also need to throw a little bit of solder at it. Yep, that one's on. Do my data pin. That one's on as well. Right, out, we're done with the soldering. So what we're going to use is just a little 2IC board um, and these are fairly cheap uh, and we're just going to hook the battery up to it. I'll leave a link to uh, where I got this one from, there's lots of places that sell it, they're really cheap. So as we said, I just need to see, so blue was clock, so the grey one was ground, so I'll put that on ground which is the second pin. Uh, the next pin is data, which is purple, and then blue is my clock. So it's just those three pins. What you find sometimes is that if there's not enough power to drive the BMS board, so this is the BMS board, 
And one of my pins has come off already, so I'll need to solder that one again. Might need a little bit of flux. Um, sometimes if there's not enough power in the battery to drive the BMS, uh, you need to plug the charger in. I've found that a couple of times. Just turn my soldering iron back on and I will just tag that cable in again. I might just give it a little bit more solder uh, on there just to get me a really good connection so it doesn't come off again. Purple one's alright, for some reason the blue one just didn't hold. So the way these things sometimes they don't hold very well. going to get a big blob of solder on there so I've got something bigger to attach the wire to before it was quite small so now I've got a good blob on there these pads aren't very big at all right -o. so that should stay on just turn my soldering on off right -o. we'll move over to the computer Okay, so I've started up the DJI battery killer software. The first thing I need to do is change to the device that I'm using. And as you can see, it's a CP2112. Uh, I then connect to that device. Uh, I want to change the chip to the chip I'm using, which is a BQ30Z55. Uh, the first thing I always do is I just read info. That lets me know that I'm connected to the chip and everything's working okay. It shows me what the current voltages are. Um, it tells me that the chip is sealed. The first thing I want to do is just read the registers to confirm that the issue is that the PF flag is set. And as you can see on this one, it's red, uh, which means that uh, it's uh, currently active. So you won't be able to charge this. You won't be able to use it because it turns off the MOSFETs, which enable both charging and uh, consumption of the battery. So let's just go back to the log. And the first thing I want to do is I just want to do an unseal. And as we can see, this battery is now unsealed. The next thing we want to do is do a clear PF. And it's been able to write that word in OK. The next thing we want to do is seal this chip. And as you can see, uh, that chip is now sealed. So this unit will be good to go now. Uh, you'll be able to charge it. You'll be able to put in a drone. Uh, it should work. Um, there are some other reasons why it might be faulty, um, in which case, have a look at the data sheet for the chip, have a look at the registries, um, and see which one might be causing that. Um, just because they're red doesn't necessarily mean it's a fault. What it means, the green and red tell you that something's either active or not active. So with that PF being red, it means that that flag is active, which means that it stops the ability to charge, consume power out of it because it's disabled those MOSFETs. If you try and unseal the chip and it won't, there's a different process to be able to um, reset the keys to be able to carry out that process. Um, there's, I'll drop a video either in the description or as one of the end credits, um, which will show you how to do that. Okay, so we've uh, got the battery that we fixed uh, and I'm just going to put the charger on it and it should just magically charge. There we go. It's, uh, it's off and charging, so yeah, that one's fixed and good. 